Will you pray with me? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart here be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here at our 10 o'clock worship service, we have a very meaningful liturgy that we do every Sunday. We carry in the light of Christ. As you saw earlier, the acolytes come forward and light the candelabras and the two candles on our communion table. In our early service at 8 o'clock, we have Dave Munch, and he lights our candles for us. Unless we pay attention to it, though, we may think this is just a fancy way of lighting the candles and a way of having the young people involved. But the purpose of any liturgy that we do is to call attention to the presence of God in our lives, the presence of God in worship. Carrying in the light of Christ is a reminder that God is present with us. God is present with us as a church, and God is present with us in our daily lives. And the light of Christ says that not only is God present with us, but God is also guiding us along the way. In our scripture passage today, Jesus tells a crowd of people, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world, the light of our world, the light of our church. His light will comfort us and give us hope as he guides us through life. One of our stained glass windows in our church has that phrase on it, the image of Jesus as the light of the world. Your job after worship is to try to find it, sort of a scavenger hunt. One of the features of the Gospel of John is the seven I am statements that Jesus makes. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the gate for the sheep, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the vine. In our Lenten sermon series, we're going to be looking at four of these I am statements. The I am statements serve two purposes. By using them, Jesus is self-identifying himself as God, the God of Israel who has been with the Hebrew people ever since they left Egypt on the Exodus. The phrase, I am, is an identifier of God that would have been familiar to his hearers. At the burning bush, when Moses asked God what his name is, God says, I am who I am. In Isaiah 43, God says, you are my witnesses that you may know and believe that I am the Lord. I am God, and henceforth I am he. Jesus' identification with God is highlighted in the argument he makes with the Pharisees at the end of our passage. He says, My judgment is valid, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. If you know me, you would also know my Father." There is no doubt that in Jesus' mind and in the Pharisees' mind, Jesus is claiming his divine nature, that he is God. It's such a bold and clear proclamation that the Pharisees want to arrest him at the end of the passage. Well, the second purpose of the I am statements in John is Jesus' illustration that God will provide us the abundant life he promises in chapter 10. Jesus is the gate that opens the way to real, abundant life. Jesus is the bread of life that satisfies our deepest hunger. So as we look at these I am statements of Jesus, may each image allow us to realize and proclaim the abundant life that God gives us. Well, in today's scripture, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He offers us comfort and hope of God. He offers that God is with us as we encounter the darkness of this world. Jesus, the light of the world, promises us his abiding presence as we walk through the darkness of life. Well, the image of God's light illuminating the darkness is constant and faithful image of God's presence and the world, 
of God's guiding presence for His people. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And He separated the light from the darkness, and He called the light good. The image of light as good and darkness as evil is also a consistent image in Scripture. And it helps us understand the meaning of this passage and allows us to benefit from the light of God. The Exodus passage that Patrick read today has a direct connection with Jesus' statement, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. As God led the Hebrew people out of Egypt, it would have been a difficult, dangerous journey. They would have faced much darkness, fear of the Egyptians pursuing them, fear of war with the Philistines ahead of them, fear of the wilderness around them, where were they going to find food and water and provisions? Fear of facing the unknown. What lies ahead of them in the future? But the Lord went before them, we are told. The Lord led them with a visible sign, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that did not depart from them. God was present with his people. God was leading them through the darkness of that wilderness. As the Hebrew people left the darkness of slavery and were traveling to the hope of the promised land, the light of God guided them. The light of God provided them comfort and hope. Well, to commemorate God's presence with them through their lives, the Festival of Booths and the Festival of Tabernacles was held each year. This annual festival reminded them that God's light was with them, especially during difficult, dark times. As we face our own darkness and fear, Jesus is our source of comfort and hope, guiding us as the light of the world. Jesus makes this claim during the Festival of Tabernacles. This feast was the biggest and most joyous festival there was in Jerusalem, It was attended by hundreds and thousands of pilgrims who journeyed to Jerusalem and spent all week in little booths made of tree branches. This was done to remember their ancestors lived in these same huts or tents as they traveled through the Sinai Desert, as they made their way from Egypt to the Promised Land. One important part of this festival was called the Illumination of the Temple. On the first night... Four huge candelabras were set up in the center of the temple court. Each one had four golden bowls on top of it, and floating in these bowls were wicks that were lit when the sun went down. Ancient historians tell us that when they were lit, the whole city of Jerusalem reflected the light, making a very spectacular sight. This ceremony was to remind them that God guided His people through the desert at night with a pillar of fire. It reminded them that God was still guiding them. It was on the last night of this celebration that Jesus was teaching in the temple near the spot where these candles were ablaze. And there he proclaimed, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Those words by Jesus, spoken in that setting, surrounded by those candelabras, would have made an undeniable impact on the hearers. Listen to this paraphrase one author suggested for the verse. You have seen the blaze of the temple piercing the darkness of the night, illuminating all of Jerusalem. I am the light of the world, illuminating the whole world. For the one who follows me, there will be light, not only for seven joyous nights, but for every night, every day. The light of the four candelabras is a brilliant light, but in the end it flickers and it dies. I am the light that never goes out. In many ways, this is a very outrageous claim by Jesus. Outrageous because it's both exclusive and it's inclusive. It's a very exclusive claim. I am the light, the only one. Just like there's only one sun, one solar sun for the earth, there's only one son of God for the world. But it is for the whole world. It is very inclusive. 
including everyone. And it's also very individual for us. Whoever believes and follows will never walk in darkness. Instead, they will have the light of life. The darkness of this world is real. The darkness is powerful, but it cannot compare to the light. The good news is that Jesus, the light of the world, dispels the darkness. As we experience the darkness of this world, Jesus is our source of hope and comfort in three very distinct ways. First, the light of the world dispels any darkness of doubt. You know, when we face difficulties in life, it's easy to question God's presence, God's care. Where is God during those dark times? Until Jesus came, people could only guess about God. But Jesus is God, revealing God to us. In John 1.18, he says, No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who makes him known. The light has come into the world, and we see God in Jesus Christ. We see what God is like. We see how he acts. We see God's love, his grace, his truth, his power, and his glory. We no longer have to wonder about God. Like the Hebrew people who knew God was with them in the pillar of fire, we know God is present with us, Jesus, the light of the world who goes before us. Well, second, the light of the world dispels any darkness of despair. You know, living life without God is like walking around in the dark. We stumble, we grope and fall, we go the wrong way, we get disorientated, bruised and broken. We cannot get life right on our own. We do not know the way because our way is not the right way, and neither are the myriad of other ways the world offers. This is the definition of sin, wanting to go our way instead of God's. Well, because of sin, we stumble, we fall, we take wrong turns. We live in despair of ever getting life right or becoming the people we are meant to be. But with the light of God, we see the right way to go. We avoid the things that litter our path, the things that trip us up, that cause us to fall and stumble. We can see the way to follow God's will and experience the abundant life he offers. So we rejoice at the words of Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. And with that light, we feel power instead of despair because we do not walk alone. We walk in the light and with the light. Jesus walks with us as the light that guides us. Jesus, as the light of the world, came to not only show us the way, but to help us walk in the way. And third and finally, the light of the world dispels the darkness of death. The light of the world is the light of life. There have been lots of articles and books written about people who have had near-death experiences. And when they tell about what happened to them in those few moments, their stories are all different except for one thing. They see light. They all see light. It's sort of the opposite of what we expect. We think of death as entering darkness, the end. But with Jesus, there is light. Jesus, by his coming, by his life, death, and resurrection, showed that death was not the end, but only the way to more life. Through Jesus, we see new life, and we live with that hope. That even though we walk through the valley of the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear. For God, the light of the world, is with us. Jesus is the light of the world that guides us during our darkness. The third book in the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis is called The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. In that book, he has an illustration of the power of light over darkness. The Dawn Treader is a ship, and the main characters are sailing to the end of the world, searching for someone who is trapped on Dark Island. On their journey, the ship sails into total darkness, a place filled with, they say, one's worst nightmares, one's darkest wishes, evil. Complete darkness overtakes them, and it seems they will never escape. They are terrified. 
I want to read this portion of that book to you. The same idea was occurring to everyone on board. We shall never get out. Never. Lucy bowed her head down and whispered, Aslan. You remember, Aslan is the Christ figure in the story. Aslan, send us help now. The darkness did not grow any less, but she began to feel a little better. Look, cried a voice from the bow. There is a tiny speck of light ahead. And while they watched, a broad beam of light fell from it upon the ship. It did not alter the darkness surrounding it, but the whole ship was lit up as if by a searchlight. Lucy looked along the beam and saw something in it. At first it looked like a cross. Then it looked like an airplane. Then it looked like a kite. And at last, with the whirring of wings, it was right overhead. It was an albatross. It circled three times around the mast and then perched for an instant at the prow. It called out in a strong, sweet voice what seemed to be words, though no one understood them. After that, it spread its wings, rose, and began to fly slowly ahead. The captain steered after it, not doubting that it offered good guidance. No one except Lucy knew that as it circled the mast, it had whispered to her, Courage, dear heart, courage. And the voice she felt sure was Aslan's. In a few moments, the darkness turned into a grayness, and then almost before they dared to begin hoping, they shot out into the sunlight and were in the warm blue world again. That light was a source of comfort and hope and help that they needed when the darkness had overcome them and they were terrified. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Darkness is real. Darkness is the place of our worst nightmares, our darkest fears, evil. But the light is greater than the dark. And when Jesus said those who follow him would never walk in darkness, he didn't mean there would never be darkness in our lives again, but that, he, but that we could not be overcome by it. We would not have to live in the darkness, and he would be with us to lead us and guide us through and out of it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and there was life. That same word that spoke light and life into the world came into the world in Jesus Christ. The light of the world came and brings new life to a world that's filled with darkness. The light of the world came for us to dispel the darkness, to be with us in the darkness, giving us belief in times of doubt, direction in times of despair, and hope in the face of death. May the light of the world, the light of life, Jesus Christ, shine and bright in our lives, assuring us of God's guiding presence even in our darkest moments. Well, at the end of our worship service, the acolytes return and they carry the light of Christ out, giving us our mission to follow. As we worship with Christ, with the light of Christ in our midst, let us carry the light of Christ out into the world. Amen.